In this Elder Scrolls Online Mythics item guide, I'm going to show you how to efficiently search for the leads of all of the 15 currently available Mythic items. If you want to get all or most of the Mythic items based on the roles of your characters, then this video is for you. Acquiring a Mythic item isn't as simple as it seems because your scrying skill needs to be at least level 7 and you should have unlocked the Antiquarian Insight 4 passive. Only then can you scry these antiquities to know where to excavate them. However, this shouldn't stop you from obtaining their leads, even when these antiquity skills haven't been sufficiently leveled up yet, considering that you have 30 days before said leads expire anyway. For example, you can still obtain Bloodlord's Embrace Thirsting Girdle upon beating a Lambrus Athro in the Crypt of Hearts 1 dungeon. Mythic items require you to obtain 5 of its pieces, each with its own Master Difficulty lead. In total, there are 15 Mythic items starting from the Greymore expansion to the most recent Deadlands DLC. For more details on the functionality of each Mythic item, visit the Mythic Items section on our Elder Scrolls Online wiki. We'll go through them depending on your character's role together with their respective locations and how you can obtain the Mythic Item leads as quickly as possible. More often than not, the site where these pieces are excavated is situated in the same zone as where you found its lead. Note that you have to own every expansion and many DLCs in order to obtain all Mythic Items in ESO. For this reason, it is recommended you purchase the Blackwood Edition and subscribe to ESO Plus for a month while obtaining these items. For DPS characters, it's best to choose from the Thrassian Stranglers, Death Dealer's Feet, Harpooner's Waiting Kilt, Shapeshifter's Chain, and Belharz's Banned Mythic Items. Let's start with Thrassian Stranglers. Thrassian Stranglers requires that you own the Somerset expansion. The best zone to start with is Arteum, since you'll spend the majority of your time here when you're leveling up your Antiquarian skills due to the map's small size. As such, dig sites are nearer to each other compared to the other locations in ESO. Here you'll have to fish in the Mystic Fishing Holes until you get the Coral Plating lead. Additionally, if you've joined the Sigic Order and unlocked See the Unseen passive, drop by a Sigic portal in this zone for the sticky and tegument leather. If you're still in the mood to do some more fishing, but this time in saltwater fishing holes, then head to Strauss Mackay to obtain the Buoyant Steel Lead. Alternatively, you can go to Ardon to slay any world boss until you get the Inert Anamone Inlay. You can then travel to Somerset and participate in either the Karwastin Public Dungeon or any world boss event to acquire the Nautilus Shell Guards Lead. In the same zone, if you haven't received the Sticky Intugament Leather previously, be sure to drop by a Sigic Portal here for it. For Death Dealer's Feet, you'll need the Imperial City DLC for the Carved Signet Base Lead. You'll be able to acquire this by killing upstairs bosses or the patrolling horrors with a huge group since these are formidable foes. Next, you'll need the Blackwood Expansion, and in Blackwood you'll have to search for the Oblivion Portal, which appears randomly, and then eliminate the final boss to gain access to the chest. Doing so may reward you with the Worm Asymmetrical Ruby Lead. Next, you can go to Craglorn or Cyrodiil. In Craglorn, you'll be able to acquire the Sturdy Silver Prongs lead by finishing the Dragon Star Arena, as well as the Wide Barb Shank lead if you continue searching for anomalies. Finally, in Cyrodiil, you'll receive the rewards of the Worthy when you participate in PvP. Sift through these rewards for the Weighted Spiked Bridge lead. When it comes to the Harpooner's Waiting Kill, you'll also be traveling a lot across Tamriel. Be sure to have the Shadows of the Hist and Merkmire DLCs together with the Blackwood Chapter to obtain the leads for this mythic item. You can first head to Shadowfen, where you get the Bog Blue Jasper Fetish and Tide Glass Beads leads by slaying Treeminder Nakesh, the final boss of Runes of Mazatun, and scouring water plants and nodes respectively. If you're still in the mood to do relaxing activities, go to Merkmire and fish in foul water fishing spots until you receive the Wolftail Sash. Otherwise, visit Balfoyan and kill Covenant enemies to obtain the Silverweave Cord. Lastly, teleport to Blackwood to defeat either the Old Deathwort or Solzon Ritualist World Boss to receive the Cothringi Cut Leather lead. For the Shapeshifter's Chain before teleporting to any of the zones, I highly suggest participating in either the Vaults of Madness or the Spindle Clutch 2 dungeons. When you kill their corresponding final bosses, you'll get the Chain of Bone Goliath and Length of Sharpened Leads respectively. Since queuing for these group dungeons takes some time, you can opt to go to the Reach, Western Skyrim, Craglorn, or Blackwood while waiting. In the Reach or Western Skyrim, which require the Mark Karth DLC and Greymore expansion, you have to join Harrowstorms or World Events to obtain the Chain of the Vampire Lead. Next, travel to Craglorn and slay all the bosses in Hercene's Haunt for the length of the Sharpened Spikes. And finally, head to Blackwood and kill Woot Whisper and Vur Chol, the Beast Breaker, in the Silent Hall's Public Dungeon for the Reinforced Clasp Anchor. The last mythic item that's worth considering for DPS users is Balharza's Band. To gain access to all of its leads locations, you have to own the Deadlands, Horns of the Reach, Flames of Ambition, and the Dark Brotherhood DLCs. To start off, you can either queue for the Falkreath Hold or Black Drake Villa Dungeons. In Falkreath Hold, You'll simply loot the chest you find until you get a hold of the Crimson Diamond lead, whereas in Black Drake Villa, you have to aim to kill all monsters, particularly the Minotaurs, for the Stainless Imperial Band lead. Next, head to the Gold Coast and keep searching treasure chests to get the etched silver horns while you are on your way to Tribune's Folly. 
Here you'll need to slay Liminaris boss for the Alessian Sacramental Oil lead. Lastly, travel to the Deadlands and do the daily quest there in order to obtain the daily reward coffer, which could contain the Bull's Head Gallery Rail lead. For healers, the two mythic items you want to focus on getting are the Pearls of El Nofi and Spalder of Ruin. Pearls of El Nofi consist of four leads and pieces that only require the base game and one that requires a DLC. When you're in Ardon, make sure to queue for the Banished Cells one dungeon first before making your way to Ondal or Del's Claim Delves. You can save time by acquiring the Earth Quartz Prayer Bead lead in these delves while waiting to get into the dungeon. Once you have that and the Nilum River Pearls, which you get after defeating the Banished Cells one High Kinlord Rillis final boss, you're off to Grotwood. From here, you can queue for the Crypt of Hearts 2 dungeon with the intention of defeating the final boss to retrieve the Great Altheric Pearl lead. While waiting, you can go to the Root Center Ruins public dungeon to farm any of the bosses there since the Coral Clasp is a random drop from them. For the last lead, you'll have to have access to the Markarth DLC. When you do, head over to the Reach and lockpick safe boxes to eventually get the Silver Strand of Sirabane. Next, let's talk about Spalder of Rune, whose leads can be predominantly found in the Deadlands and Blackwood, so you have to make sure that you own this DLC and chapter respectively. While you're scouring the Deadlands, you may encounter Clan Fears, which you ought to slay for the Clan Fear Leather Strapping lead. This is a random drop, so it can take a while to acquire. You can then get the Petrified Daedrith Horn first by defeating Tapazu Azida, or the Abomination Cradle World Boss, or go to the Brandfire Reformatory Delve and kill Dramora until you receive the Void Ally Rivet's lead. There's really no order needed for either of them. Afterwards, you can travel to Blackwood specifically and lay a win. Keep opening safe boxes until you get the Void Ally Lame Pirate's lead. And finally, visit Stone Falls and slay the Shivering Shrine World Boss to acquire the Ariel Armor Glaze lead. For tanks, the mythic items you want are Bloodlord's Embrace or Torque of Tonal Consistency. For Bloodlord's Embrace, four of its leads only require you to have the base game, except for Hecotum, Tacits, which can be found in the Imperial City Sewers. Let's discuss the first four leads. Both the Goblet, Gorget, and Thirst and Girdle leads are obtained by defeating the final bosses of Spindle Clutch 1 and Crypt of Hearts 1 dungeons, respectively, so you can queue for either of them. While waiting to enter these dungeons, you should roam around Shadowfriend, particularly in the Sanguine's Demence Public Dungeon, to defeat every boss you encounter. If you're lucky, you'll get the Fanged Curious lead soon enough. Alternatively, you can opt to acquire the Sanguine Doublet lead first in Cold Harbor by slaying the Village of Lost Public Dungeon bosses. The last lead for Bloodlord's Embrace is the Hecatomb Tacits. This may be the most difficult one to obtain, however, since it's a random drop and you have to farm in a PvP zone by killing bosses. For the Torque of Tunnel Consistency, you'll be eliminating a lot of world bosses in multiple zones since the corresponding leads are random drops. The Torque Strand of Lore is found from any world boss in Alkir Desert, while the Torque Strand of Power can be obtained in Deshaun. Meanwhile, in Craglorn, you'll be participating in Anka Ra Crucible World Boss event to acquire the Torque Throat Guard's lead. You can then queue for the Blackheart Haven dungeon for the Torque Strand of Song lead, which is obtained by eliminating the final boss known as Captain Blackheart, followed by traveling to Stone Falls. While waiting for this group dungeon to start, you'll be able to get the Torque Tonal Focus when you kill bosses in the Crowswood Public Dungeon there. If you spend the majority of your time in ESO playing PvP or playing solo like in Maelstrom Arena, you'll want to consider getting the following mythic items. Snow Treader's Ring of the Wild Hunt, Malakath's Band of Brutality, Ring of the Pale Order, Mark and Ring of Majesty, and Gaze of Sithis. Let's begin with Snow Treader's. Snow Treader's leads will take you to a lot of zones that are accessible in the base game alone. This includes Bleak Rock Isle, Cold Harbor, and the Rift. But before you teleport to these places, be sure to queue for the Direfrost Keep Dungeon. Here you'll be able to get the Snowy Savior Cat first strip lead by eliminating the final boss, who goes by the name of Drada of Ice Reach. In Bleak Rock Isle, you'll have to kill random monsters until you get a hold of the Ariel Metal Carving lead. Next, head to Cold Harbor for the Magicka Imbued Metal Plates, and be sure to slay Raylan Aham in the Underpaul Delve. At the Rift, you can choose any world boss to obtain the Petrified Snow Cedar lead. For the final lead, you need to own the Greymoor expansion so you can travel to Western Skyrim. Here you'll be defeating the Black Maw boss and Labyrinthian Public Dungeon for the Glacial Metal Rivets. Most of the Ring of Wild Hunts leads are obtainable in the base game, however they necessitate you kill bosses. To start off, queue for the Elden Hollow 1 dungeon and slay Cannon Reeve or Aneth to get the Face of the Serpent. This lead drops randomly, so you'll have to repeat the dungeon several times. For the rest of the locations, you can go to them in any order you like. In Glenumbra, participate in the Badman's Hollow Public Dungeon to acquire Band of Water, while in Merkmar, you can opt to defeat world bosses or any boss in the Teeth of Sithis and Sophir Cavern Delves to receive the Charm of the Shapeless Lead. Finally, travel to Malabal Tor for the Face of the Wolf Beast and Green Shade for the Symbol of Ifrit. Eliminating any of the world bosses in these areas is acceptable. Malakath's Band of Brutality is one of the hardest mythic items to get since the leads for each of its pieces are random drops. Additionally, you'll need the Orsinium and Imperial City DLCs to gain access to Rothgar and the Imperial City respectively. 
and Rothgar head over to the old Arsinian public dungeon and prioritize defeating bosses until you receive Malakath's brutal might loop. Meanwhile, in the Imperial City, slay the patrolling horrors in the upper district. When you get lucky, you'll be rewarded with Malakath's brutal rune core lead. Similar to the Ring of the Wild Hunt, you can get the rest of the leads in the order you prefer. Travel to Reaper's March and defeat the Reaper's Henge or War Dancer Falls world bosses from Malakath's brutal ritual dust. Afterward, you can go to Stormhaven, particularly the Bone Snap Ruins public dungeon, to obtain Malakath's brutal ritual oil lead. Lastly, teleport to Betnik to get Malakath's brutal scourge hoop, which is the easiest to do since you'll be killing random monsters instead. Next is the Ring of Pale Order, which is another challenging mythic item to retrieve since most of its respective leads are random drops in different zones. These zones, however, such as Rothgar and Blackreach, Arkth's and Cavern require you to own Arsidium and the Markarth DLCs, respectively. In Rothgar, engaging in combat against any of the world bosses is recommended to get the Onyx Ascent Stones lead. Comparatively, you'll have to read the ancient text paper on the table in Night Hollow Keep at Blackreach, Arkth's and Cavern to acquire the Pale Order's Golden Brand. You can then continue zone hopping in Bankerai to search treasure chests to hopefully find the Armin Ancestral Signet lead, and in Glenumbra to kill any monster located in Badman's Hollow Public Dungeon to get the Order-Etched Gallery Rail. Last but not least, and especially if you're leveling up your Fighter's Guild skills, is the Alcar Desert. Make sure to pass by the Cold Rock Digging Delve and slay some bosses in order to receive the Dereni Elgi Loop Lead. On the other hand, the Markan Ring of Majesty will mostly take you to the Deadlands, similar to the Spalder of Rune Mythic items. The best sequence of lead acquisition is to follow is to first to queue for Banished Cells 1 or 2, and then to explore Deadlands before heading to Cold Harbor. In this dungeon, you'll be slaying archer mobs to get the rune blood coil. Meanwhile, when you're in Deadlands, you can simply head to the Den of the Unmaker world boss and kill it to receive the Mind Cleaver loop lead. You'll then head to the passage of the east of where this is to encounter dead rats, which drop the searing gem lead. While you're here, you'll be given a daily reward coffer that can possibly contain the Fire Scourge ban. And finally, go to Cold Harbor and scour treasure chests until you receive more Fothalus Shank lead. The final mythic item leads we're going to talk about in this guide are the Gaze of Sithis, which requires that you have the Dark Brotherhood and Shadows of the Hiss DLCs together with a Blackwood expansion. I suggest getting the Ritual Circle at lead first since it's straightforward compared to the rest. You'll only have to complete the Cradle of Shadows dungeon. Next, you can go to Blackwood and Xenathar's Abbey to slay every boss you see. You'll eventually acquire the Glass Skeletal Visage lead. This method is quite similar when you travel to Deshaun. Farm the Forgotten Crypt public dungeon bosses until you get the Nisuo Sacramental Wraps. Meanwhile, in Shadowfen, you have to enter the Onkabra Kwama Mine Delve and keep defeating the Kwama Overseer boss. One of its drops should yield the Podsa Shark Teeth Lead. Lastly, to get the preserved Raxu Feathers, you first have to make sure that you have the Shadowy Supplier Passive from the Dark Brotherhood skill line unlocked. Next, talk to Remain Silent in the Outlaw's Refuge in Vordenfell and then choose Have Any Equipment Today option. If he doesn't provide you with equipment containing the lead, you'll have to try again after 20 hours. Well, that's it for our mythic item guides. I hope this finds you all the mythic items that you need. Be sure to check out the Elder Scrolls Online wiki or visit our Twitch channel if you have questions about the game. What are the mythic items that you're most interested in getting? How is your experience bed and lean hunting going so far? Let us know in the comments below.